After looking into the two common types of Starfleet torpedo, I thought I should probably mention the plasma devices favoured by the Romulans, Ferengi and several others, although even these species do not use exclusively plasma-based torpedoes. First up, in terms of casings for plasma torpedoes, often it can be the same as described in the Photon and Quantum variants, as mentioned in that video. It's been alluded to that quantum torpedoes may even have a plasma base to them. Basically, plasma is superheated ionised gas where the electrons are stripped away from the molecules, which generates a lot of energy. In Starfleets, the most common use for plasma is as part of an energy system, such as a warp assembly. But like antimatter, it can be weaponised. Starfleet itself chose not to pursue plasma as an offensive option, instead focusing on its phaser and photon technology, as plasma was often inferior to those devices. That isn't to say it's eschewed it altogether though. There are several varieties of handheld phaser that actually use a plasma base instead of a nadion stream, but are different from disruptors, presumably because they still are subjected to the phase effects that gives phasers their names. The NX-01 was equipped with plasma cannons for a time too, but these were quickly replaced. Editing Rick here with an addendum, I guess there's always the chance that the Nadion streams could be superheated to plasma because they are made up of a particle and we don't know their properties. Anyway, back to it. However, in 2266, a Romulan bird of prey crossed the neutral zone to conduct a series of raids on Federation outposts and tested its new incredibly powerful plasma torpedo system. These stations were constructed of rhodinium, but completely vaporised by the engulfing plasma weapon. This plasma torpedo was more unique than it first appears, however, as unlike most projectiles of the time, it was effectively formless. It was essentially a guided plasma cloud contained in a magnetic sheath that was guided towards its target. This would explain why it dissipated after some time, as it exceeded the controllable range of the firing vessel. Although slow moving, when compared to most torpedoes, this was not much of an issue for the patient bird of prey, as it was also equipped with a new cloaking device that allowed it to close the distance in on its target, minimising the plasma torpedo's travel time. By the 24th century, the Star Empire was using trilithium isotopes in their plasma torpedoes, which increased their yield, but was most definitely using physical casings for their new designs, as they tried to stockpile them on Bajor's moon during the Dominion War. Their research into incorporating trilithium, a substance that causes quantum collapse, began in 2371. There are numerous other spacecraft weapons that use plasma, often if not as a missile, torpedo or charge, then as a beam weapon. Such a device operates on the same principle as the 23rd century Romulan torpedo, in that they are a stream of plasma contained in a directed energy tunnel aimed at a target, like a hose. However, it seems to be plasma weapons have some serious drawbacks if this is how they work, the most obvious being magnetic interference. Plasma is easily influenced by electromagnetic fields, which makes them guidable as weapons and stuff, but wouldn't a plasma beam or magnetically encased torpedo simply dissipate if a stronger force attracted it, or even simply repelled the beam? It should be really easy to modify a deflector shield to scatter plasma. We also see plasma weapons being used in less linear fashion than simply a beam or a torpedo. The Ferengi Marauder can generate a plasma shockwave by expelling a cloud of it in a concussive force, and dousing a ship's intakes, like the Bussard Ram Scoops, in plasma can overheat and shut down most engine systems. Many plasma torpedoes too leave a strong plasma residue that continues to burn and corrode the target, further weakening the hull beyond the initial impact. Starfleet ships do still carry plasma weapons, not only plasma for utility, although their other offensive technology generally outstrips them. But Federation starships are often carrying all sorts of varieties of gear and tech because you never know what you'll need out there in deep space. Plasma devices still see their use from time to time, mostly because of the easy access to large amounts of plasma, and the fact that even something as innocuous as warp plasma can be refined into weapons grade stuff rather easily. Its storage is much less risky than antimatter too, and it is a far more simple device to construct than a quantum torpedo. Basically, plasma weapons trade power for convenience. 
but that doesn't mean they're limited to only one function, so they remain one of the most common weapon types out there. <laughs> Even the Borg utilise many plasma weapons, although like the Federation, they have a wide toolkit at their disposal too. Thanks for watching this breakdown of plasma weapons. If you haven't already, I recommend checking out the Photon and Quantum Differences video, and a while ago I theorised into what exactly makes a phaser preferable to Starfleet than Disruptor Tech, so there's that there too. So thanks again for watching, I've been Rick and I'll see you next time, goodbye.